I'm Nancy Livingston, and when I find something I love, I really enjoy sharing it. I'm crazy about this cookbook, Clean Vegan. I've been whole food plant-based for five years now, and I have so many vegan uh, cookbooks. Um, some are oil-free, some are not. I simply don't use oil in my cooking, so I leave it off, and I make um, adaptations. But in at least most of these recipes, not only does she not use oil, but she uses whole food ingredients in most of them. And this is Jackie Ackerberg, and the name of the cookbook is Clean Vegan. Last week, I shared, there's the photo of it, this um, yellow curry cauliflower fried rice, of course not really fried, with um, fresh pineapple and cashew nuts. Mine had toasted almonds instead. Well, today I'm going to share what's on the cover, but I'm not doing the burger. I'm gonna say to you, buy the cookbook. It's on Amazon, it comes in a couple of days and you'll have it yourself. Because as she said, it took her years to come up with this burger and her rendering of a burger is rather specific to her. You can see there's a lot of um, uh, uh, avocado in there. She has, the, the recipe includes the directions for making quick pickled onions because she wants pickled onions on it. It also includes the recipe for a sauce, classic burger sauce that I would call, um, what, a Thousand Island dressing type sauce. And um, other must-have toppings. I'm not doing any of that today. The only thing I'm doing is making a burger patty. We want burgers because we love burgers. Um, that's one thing that uh, a lot of people miss when they go whole food, whole food plant-based, but there are terrific burgers out there. I have a number of recipes, but I wanted to try this one. I like her style. I like her flavors. And I'll show you what I'm going to be doing. This has vegetables, it has mushroom, it has oat, it has, um, oh, chickpeas. So I know I'm gonna love it. And then a lot of spices. Um, so you're going to see what I'm doing. First, I'm sauteing, gently sauteing the, the aromatics, those vegetables that add flavor like onion and garlic and we'll put in some carrot, we'll put in some mushroom, and then we'll take it over after that cools just a few minutes. I'm going to move you over to another work area and that's where we're going to blend it in a food processor, pat it out, bake it in my Breville oven. It could have been my conventional oven and um, we'll have the burgers. I am going to have a lettuce wrap burger because I am gluten-free and I'm not crazy about most gluten-free anything. If you look at the ingredients, I'm whole food plant-based. When you look at the ingredients of most burger buns, if they are gluten-free, it's just a bunch of starches. They are denatured tapioca, corn, um, uh, rice starches. Well, that's just like eating Weber's bread. There's a brand that I like a lot, and no, it's not perfect. It has some added sugar, and it does certainly have some salt but this is Dave's Killer Bread, but it's whole grain. And it's whole grain and lots and lots and lots of good ingredients in here. And so this is what my husband eats. He's not sensitive to gluten. So we have this beautiful bun, I'll show it to you later. And um, that's what he gets to do. And his will look a lot like hers, but he doesn't like that high of a burger. He wants to put his mouth on it and chew it without the whole thing sort of exploding, but I think it looks pretty good the way it is. Okay, so I have a hot pan here, and if you've watched any of my videos, you know that when I saute, I actually do it in a dry pan because there is no need to use oil. And as I've said before, if I have three or four things today that I am making, and every one of them has one, two, three, four, five tablespoons of oil. I add hundreds of calories a day to what I wouldn't otherwise taste. So I am fine not using oil, especially with, with um, onions. Uh, 
conventional onions as opposed to, and by conventional, I mean a regular globe onion, as opposed to, let's say, a leek that's a little bit drier, a shallot that's even drier. Green onions have moisture in the white part. The green part tends to just sort of disintegrate when you cook it, and so I prefer to sprinkle those on top. Okay, now, what is this? This is my own homemade broth. I make it by the quart. Actually, I make it by the gallon. And then I freeze it in four to five cup sizes. And then I keep a quart of it in the refrigerator. Um, and I just keep the veggie scraps in the freezer in a one gallon Ziploc bag. And when that one gallon is full, I pull out my stock pot and I make it. And that's how I can have stock all the time, soups all the time, without paying for stock off a shelf in a store. And what happens, and I don't know if you realize this, is that stock cooks down more quickly than water in a pan. It might just be because it has, I was going to say debris, well I did say debris, that it has some, um, you know, things in it that, um, anyway, that, that dry up more quickly in heat. So the only thing I was trying to do here was to soften it. If I was going to brown it a little, I wouldn't have put the garlic in right away. Garlic uh, quite often will be turned bitter when it browns. I just wanted to soften these vegetables. So I did that for maybe a minute or two while I'm yakking. You see I'm killing time. And then I'm going to add carrot. I love the idea of having some carrot in my burger. And see, this is the kind of burger that you can drop kick on kids <laughs> to get them to eat veggies they don't even know they're eating. Okay, and I'm putting in mushroom. Now here's, this is interesting, because she called for three quarters of a cup of chopped mushroom. And then she said 53 uh, grams. Well, I looked up the conversion and I saw that 53 grams is about two ounces. So I went to, we're going to be traveling. I don't want a lot of food around. So I went to the store, uh, the store where I could buy it bulk, and I got two ounces of crimini mushroom and uh, about that size. It was only three mushrooms, only three. I thought, is that really three quarters of a cup chopped? And you know what? It certainly was. Um, that's the thing about mushrooms. And yet, I think they add a lovely umami to anything. And if you know anything about Joel Furman's, um, I'll say his nutritional dictates, his G-bombs, He's a nutritarian. You eat your nutrients and you get them every day. His G bombs are greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, and um, bombs, beyond, uh, berries, and then seeds and nuts. And um, he says, have those daily. You wouldn't think that the aromatics. The, the onion, a white thing, garlic, a white thing, would really be very nutritious. You wouldn't think mushrooms, a fungus, <laughs> would be very nutritious, but you know what it is. Why am I yakking so much? First of all, I'm killing time, <laughs> but also, I wrote Aging Powerfully. wrote it six months before, before I turned 70, and I wrote it three years ago. Um... And I'll be 73 in a couple of months. And uh, the whole point of my book, after describing some personal things, like an eating disorder I had for decades, and left that behind five years ago, explain that, um, I tell you about, in all of my recipes, whole foods, plant-based, as a way of becoming not only well-nourished, but also living longer, aging powerfully, the name of the book, and um, feeling terrific. 
at almost 73, I feel better than I did at 70, and then better than I did at 69, and on and on. Okay, there we go. So we're just going to let that sit and cool off. And we'll be back to you in just a couple of minutes. Okay, I'm back. Are you ready to throw together all of this, which isn't even that much, to make the best burger ever? <laughs> we'll see. All right, so what's going into this? We have chickpeas and rolled oats. The chickpeas were out of this can, drained and rinsed. This is organic garbanzo beans. That's what a lot of people call chickpeas. And, um, well, it is garbanzo beans and a lot of people call them chickpeas. Um, and it's not the whole can, it's only one cup. All right, we have some rolled oats and oat flour. Where do I get oat flour? I make it, I just put my rolled oats in the Vitamix and I'm pointing to this because this is my Vitamix. You're familiar with this going on this but this particular model, the Ascent model, and then there's another model, Base, has a, an optional feature that you can purchase, and that is a food processor, and I just loved that. So I were up in my Vitamix the rolled oats and keep them in a container um, for oat flour, and I use oat flour quite a bit. In baking, I use it to thicken things. Think, speaking of thickening, this is ground flax. And that's going to give it some holding power. I, you're going to see that my tomato paste is in a cube. Why is it in a cube? Because I have these Tovalo square ice cube silicone square ice cube trays that are two tablespoons each. And when I buy um, tomato paste, I buy a bigger container of it, usually organic, and I smear these in, freeze it, and then take them out and put them into baggies, the, the Ziploc baggies. And it gives me, oh, well, I was looking for, oh, here it is. I got out some spatula and didn't bring it over. Okay. And it gives me uh, two tablespoons. I'm not going to use the whole thing because her recipe called for just a touch less. And I might as well do exactly what she is doing so that I'll know what I would, when I type up the recipe, recommend we consider. And what is this? That's what you just saw me do. That is onion, carrot, garlic and crimini mushroom, all sauteed dry. Well, it's not really dry, it's dry saute, which simply means I don't use oil, but of course I use a little bit of broth to deglaze the pan as well as keeping it from sticking. Now this combination, look how pretty that is, can you see? Includes cumin, coriander, ground pepper, chili powder, paprika, and a little bit of salt. You can leave the salt out or you can um, use a salt substitute um, like Mrs. Dash, but that's a seasoning or um, Benson's Table Tasty. Uh, okay, and then a couple of tablespoons of either coconut aminos, which is what she uses the most. I use tamari instead. Um, that soy sauce that does not have gluten, but neither do coconut aminos, but I like the tamari. And put this on, sorry for the sound, and we're going to blend it, just make it jump around a bit until it's a, until it's a not quite, well, we want a chunky paste. I'm going to say it that way. Oh. Here it goes. It's always a good idea to clean the sides and push it down. Oh, this smells great. When you think of those seasonings, 
combined and then the tomato paste to give it a bit of, um, I'll say the umami of the tomato paste as well as the umami of the tamari, which is soy sauce, as well as the umami. Umami is one of those things that is hard to describe but makes you keep coming back for more. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. Did I turn it off? No. Nope. Oh, I don't have it on, right? There. Oh, man. To discover something together because what she calls for is and this may be all I want to do but I'm going to do just one more very lightly we don't want a paste I shouldn't have used that word we want a blended moist mixture but not too moist and she said if it's too moist add more uh, flour the old flour but it's not. Okay. What we don't want also is it to fall apart. Okay. Now, the directions are to, I'm going to get this out of here. I've washed my hands. Are to, uh, or the directions say to make eight um i think it's going to be easier if i put this in a pan let me show you how handy this is there that comes right off and let's get this out of the way okay we're going to be eating in just a little while, so I don't have to refrigerate these, I don't have to wait. I can simply make them into burgers and serve them. My husband will get a burger with lettuce, onion, pickle, um, big tomato slice, and mustard. And I will do mine with all of that plus um, ketchup, I love ketchup. And that's it, we're not going to put, well that's not true, we're gonna have some slices of avocado, but not of guacamole. All right, now this is a third cup measure, and we'll see if I get, I'm not going to take, I'm not gonna fill it, um, because I'm afraid I won't have enough. She said you want eight burgers. I may not get eight burgers out of this, but I'm gonna be happy with what I get because I don't want minuscule burgers either. So let's just see what happens. And roll it in your hand and flatten it out of the instructions. So two, four, six, seven, and I'm not going to do eight, but I could have done eight. I could have had them smaller and probably a little bit flatter. All right, roll in a ball and then flatten out. Now, there are a couple of things that you can do with a burger. I've done this before, uh, the plant, plant burgers. Um, I've used a the cover of a bell jar, put a little bit of um, uh, pl uh, plastic wrap, just a little square of plastic wrap, push this in and I could do that. I could push this in and then just pull the edge of the plastic wrap and have a perfectly formed burger. I could use something like this. This, this is a burger press and put the mixture in, you can just get this online, put the mixture in and then 
actually this should be on top so I can get it off easily enough. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to, actually, I think I'm going to use the press to make them round, uh, flat. And I believe the next time I make these, I think I'm going to make them, I have only six of them, because I believe I'm going to want a larger, uh, fuller burger. All right, two, four, six. And I'm going to do this right in front of you. <laughs> I'm gonna do what I just said there. All right. And I'm not gonna take your time to press all of them. I'll just show you what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to put them in a 400 degree oven. This is my Breville oven. I could have put them in my regular oven, but why would I use that size when I can use my wonderful little baking and air frying and warming and toasting oven um, and uh, not heat a big oven like that. One thing I love to do is to point out how clean it is, <laughs> how bright and shiny after, what, five years? And I'll tell you why because when you don't cook meat, even burgers, for example, when you don't cook meat, see, I'm gonna have you watch me anyway, um, you don't get spatter. You don't get all the fat spattering all over. Even a regular burger would spatter like crazy. Look, yep, definitely not a six. Take a look. So I'm gonna bake these. They're going to be great with this size bun, oh, that'll be perfect. Because unlike a meat burger, it's not going to shrink this way. They're gonna pretty much stay the same size. And actually I like the um, hmm, the slightly raggedy edges. I think it looks that much more authentic. Okay, so I'll be taking a picture of our burgers when they're done and um, thank you for sticking with me. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you've learned. Consider my book. And follow me on YouTube if you want to know how to age powerfully, powerfully because that's my whole point. We can age powerfully by taking great care of ourselves and living a life where we use lifestyle as medicine. Bye.